Hello and welcome back to EFD, where today we're looking at 10 football games which turned into fights. Keep watching for some of the most disgusting, disgraceful and hilarious matches in history. 10. 2010 World Cup Final The 2010 World Cup Final was expected to be a feast of football. Spain, in their first appearance in the decider, faced the nation which had a greater influence on them than any other, the land of Cruyff and total football. But the Netherlands, to their credit, knew they couldn't compete on a level playing field. A midfield of Van Bommel, Schneider and Nigel de Jong couldn't hold a candle to Busquets, Iniesta, Xavi and Xavi Alonso. And so, this time to their this credit, they decided to hack the Spanish out of the match. Nigel de Jong was lucky to escape a red card in the first half, planting his foot into Alonso's chest like Neil Armstrong's first step onto the moon. The Orange clocked up a whopping nine yellow cards with just two of their outfield starters avoiding the ref's notebook, while Spain, fighting fire with fire, picked up five of their own. In extra time, Johnny Heitiger was dismissed for a tug on Iniesta, becoming the fifth man to be sent off in a World Cup final, and the Barca player went on to score the winner. The game ended with a total of 46 fouls committed, and Johan Cruyff denounced his own country in the Spanish press, calling them dirty, vulgar and anti-football. 9. The Battle of Highbury Mussolini makes his first appearance of two in our list in ninth spot. In 1934, Italy had just won the World Cup, but a dispute with FIFA meant that England, then considered one of the world's best teams, had to skip the tournament, leading some to belittle the Azzurri's achievement. A friendly was arranged at Highbury, and the stakes were high, with Mussolini offering each player an Alfa Romeo and a £150, the equivalent to 6,000 quid today, if Italy came out on top. Fittingly, the first impact was made by an Arsenal player, as Gunners frontman Ted Drake crunched into Italy's Monti, breaking the Argentine-born defender's foot. It was just the second minute, and with no subs permitted in those days, Monti had to soldier on, as England scored three times inside 12 minutes. But soldier on the Italians did, adjusting their defence and dishing out a broken arm to one English player and a broken nose to another. Drake got punched in the face and Italy scored twice to make the result respectable. After the match, the FA considered withdrawing England from international competition, and 19-year-old Stanley Matthews, who would go on to play until he was 50, later claimed it was the most brutal game of his entire career. 8. Bramall Lane Beatdown It's almost comforting to know that even in 2002, the spirit of 1930s was still alive in Yorkshire. West Brom were in the second tier, competing for promotion to the Premier League, and with eight games left of the season, travelled to Sheffield United, hoping to firm up the grip on their playoffs. The first dismissal came after just nine minutes, with United keeper Simon Tracy walking after handling the ball outside his box. However, despite the man advantage, it took until 18 minutes for Albion to open the scoring. The Baggies looked set for a routine win, but in the second half, the Blades got bloody. Georges Santos, subbed on in the 64th minute, was sent off in the 65th for a two-footed tackle on Andy Johnson, revenge for breaking Santos's cheekbone the previous season. A scrap broke out, and Patrick Suffo, who had come on at the same time as Santos, also saw red after just one minute of action, headbutting West Brom's Derek McInnes. Albion overran the eight men of Sheffield, making it 3-0, but the game was to have an unusual ending. United suffered two injuries, with Ullathorne and Brown unable to continue, and as they had used all their subs, they went down to six. The referee was forced to abandon the game, and Sheffield's players were subsequently banned for a combined 14 matches. 7. Estudiantes vs Gimnasia the rivalry between Estudiantes and Gimnasia, both from the Argentinian city of La Plata, may not be as famous as the one between Boca and River, but it's just as fierce. In 2016, a friendly between the two sides proved to be anything but, taking under an hour to degenerate into violence, after former Porto defender Alvaro Pereira followed through on a clearance, treating Jimenezia's Facando Oreja to a boot to the head. Oreja was knocked out and left the hospital on a stretcher, and Pereira saw red, but the game was unsalvageable. By injury time, the ball lay forgotten as a brawl broke out between the full squads and all the coaching staff. The match was abandoned, and 15 players were subsequently banned for a combined total of over 50 matches, with some barred by the government from even entering a football stadium. 6. Are you not entertained? Usually considered a gentleman, Francesco Totti surprised everyone during a game against Inter Milan back in 2010. 
It was the Coppa Italia final, and Inter had already won the Serie A title, pipping Roma to their Scudetto by just two points. Balotelli played nearly the whole game, coming on for Wesley Schneider after just five minutes, while Francesco Totti appeared as a sub at half-time, with the Giallo Rossi trailing 1-0. The match was a bad-tempered affair, with eight players receiving yellow cards, and Totti, though 14 years older than Super Mario, was just as hot-headed as the youngster. He was shown a yellow after just 17 minutes on the field, and in the dying moments, with Ballo breaking into the box, he ran up behind his international teammate and booted him from behind. Balotelli collapsed, and Totti, feigning concern, gave the forward another sly kick in the head. He was handed a red card, and both players went to the press with their version of events. Mario claimed that Totti had used a racist word, while the Roma captain said the 19-year-old had insulted the city of Rome. No wonder they called Totti the gladiator. 5. Nuremberg Massacre Nope, we aren't about to switch to World War II history. The Nuremberg Massacre actually refers to the 2006 World Cup match between Portugal and Holland. The two squads had 17 Champions League wins between them, with players including Cristiano Ronaldo, Luis Figo, Robin and Van Bronckhorst all turning up for the round of 16 game. But the superstars didn't display their talent or flair. Instead, their foul play took centre stage. The game saw a record number of 16 yellow cards and 4 reds, the highest number of cautions ever given in a World Cup game. On average, there was a card every five and a half minutes, with Figo, Deco, Van Bronckhorst and Boularoos all seeing red, becoming the bad boys of the naughty step, watching the game from the sidelines. Portugal managed to win the game 1-0, but Manish's goal went pretty much unnoticed as the game was scarred by referee abuse and play acting. And while the goal scorer was awarded man of the match, the most startling performance was by the Russian ref, Ivanov, who got a lot of criticism for his card-happy antics, with Set Blatter saying the official should have given himself a yellow card too. 4. Dynamo Zagreb vs Red Star Belgrade In May of 1990, communism in the Soviet was being ousted, and what was Yugoslavia was in the process of becoming Croatia. In an incredibly tense political atmosphere, bitter rivals Dynamo Zagreb and Red Star Belgrade came face to face in a game that not only became horrifically violent, but was also considered by many as the catalyst for the independence war that broke out the following year. It was before the 0-0 game at the Maskamir Stadium that the violence started. The Dynamo fans, nicknamed the Bad Blue Boys, and the Red Star Ultras started fighting on the streets, and the clash re-erupted in the stands and flooded onto the pitch. But the violence peaked when Dynamo captain Boban kicked a police officer who was attacking a fan, making him, in the eyes of the BBB, a Croatian legend. The riot meant the game was abandoned, and the league itself folded as the country descended into war. So, at that time, the game was really symbolic of wider problems across the whole nation. 3. Every Canaas 2010 Match Portuguese amateur club Canaas 2010 have famously been branded as the most violent football team in the entire world. A succession of videos on YouTube revealed their dangerous fouls, karate kicks and intimidating behaviour, meaning we can't just pick one match to highlight as the worst, but rather an entire year. Last season, Canaas 2010 went on an unbeaten run of 10 matches and won 24 out of their 26 league games. However, this was only because all the other teams in their league refused to play them, deciding the €750 Euro fine for missing a match would be less damaging to their season than facing the aggressive players. The team is supposedly made up of feared Super Dragons, the most notorious group of ultras from Porto. Former opponents have criticised the extremity of Canaias' intimidation towards referees and players, but the team's captain has said their reputation is unfair and that their connection to the Super Dragons is to blame. Canaias 2010 finished the 2016-17 regular season 25 points clear at the top of the AF Porto Elite Division, with 16 of their 24 wins coming by way of forfeit. Two further forfeits in the playoffs helped the team gain promotion to the third tier, as well as entry into the Portuguese Cup, where they could actually end up playing Porto. 2. The Battle of Santiago Pick a city and there'll be a football match called The Battle of. Santiago is no exception, with the 1962 World Cup seeing the group stage game between Chile and Italy entering football folklore. The atmosphere was already simmering by the time the Azuri turned up in South America, with local press having picked up an article from an Italian newspaper in which it claimed that Chile was full of malnutrition, illiteracy, alcoholism and poverty. The first foul took 12 seconds to arrive, and the first sending off took 12 minutes with police forcibly removing Italy's Giorgio Farini from the field. By half-time, Italy were two men down, and by full-time, two goals down, 
but the score was almost irrelevant to a match introduced on British TV as the most stupid, appalling, disgusting and disgraceful expedition of football possibly in the history of the game. Police broke up fights on four occasions, while Chile's Lionel Sanchez distinguished himself by punching two different opponents in the face. The referee, Englishman Ken Aston, was so appalled by what he had seen that he went on to invent red and yellow cards. 1. Calcio Storico Meaning historic football, Calcio Storico is a game which has been played in Florence since the 1500s. A variation of the ancient Roman sport of harpistum, it was revived by Mussolini in 1930 as a celebration of Italian masculinity and violence. Each year a tournament is played between the four quarters of the city and competition is brutal. The entire touchline at both ends of the pitch counts as the goal and teams of 27 go at it, with punching, headbutting, kicking and choking all allowed. Several deaths in the game led headshots to be outlawed, but though multiple players normally ended up heading to hospital, no substitutions are permitted. The match lasts 50 minutes and there are no stoppages, even if bones are broken. The game soaks up ancient rivalries, and in 2007 the sport was banned for a year after a fight ended in 50 players facing criminal charges. And the prize isn't even that great, in the past being a Chianina cow, and in recent years changing to a free meal. Calcio Storico was best summed up in 1574, when the King of France watched a match, he remarked that it was too small to be a real war and too cruel to be a game. It's a pity that Roy Keane never got a chance to compete. So that was 10 football matches that got too violent. As always, what did you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed that, why not check out the rest of our Christmas content on FD and EFD. There should be a link right there. I hope you've had a great new year and don't forget to like and subscribe.